Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to take your theme-based digital note hands using Google Drawing to the next level using some tips and tricks. So first, let's check out this student example here. Her theme was Disney, and you can see that she listed some of the shapes or symbols that she would use to express this theme. All right, let's go over to a blank template now. For this example, I'm using the theme of ocean, and you can see some of the things that I've written down that I'm going to be trying to create in this NOTAN. So first, if I'm trying to create a representational shape, I can use the help of the internet for some photos. I'm gonna go up to insert image, and I'm gonna search the web for a good picture of a fish. All right, I've already typed fish in here, and I've got some options, and I'm gonna to wanna to choose the fish that has the most descriptive outline because I'm going to create a silhouette of a fish. I'm going to create a shape that is just one solid color. So looking through here, I can see this fish here has a very simple outline. I could probably just freehand draw that using my mouse, but this one's a little more complex with the fin. So I'm going to select this fish and insert it into my Google drawing. Now, I'm going to make it large because I'm going to trace this fish using a line tool and it's easier to work with a large image so that I don't mess up. Okay, I'm going to go to insert line and I'm going to select the line tool that I want to use. Now when doing this, I'm going to select either the curve or the polyline tool and you decide which tool you use uh, based on the kinds of corners you have on your image. So if you're trying to create a shape of uh, an image like this fish that has very curved edges, you're gonna select the curve tool. But if your image has sharp corners, then select polyline. Okay, so I'm on curve now. So my cursor has this little plus sign here. When I down click the first time, it pins the, this little blue line and every time I click my mouse again I'm allowed to then change the direction and you can see when you change the direction using the curve line tool it gives you a nice curve okay so I'm just gonna go through um, with a series of clicks and outline my fish here for the sake of the demonstration I'm gonna go a little bit faster but you'd want to take your time and really you know make your outline as descriptive and accurate as possible now, once you get back to your starting point and click again, you'll notice that your shape uh, gets filled in blue and it's a solid shape now and not just a line. All right, I'm going to uh, just click my arrow here to select and get out of the line tool. I'm going to click on the photo and uh, minimize the size. In fact, I could delete it all together if I, if I am ready to. But now I just want to work with this shape that I created here of the fish. I'm going to begin by making it smaller and deciding where I want to place it in my notan. So let's say I want to place it here, having the nose touch the edge. I'd put it there. Maybe I'd even want to rotate it a bit. Maybe I want it to be coming up like this. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to make it a little smaller. I can do whatever I want with the size. Okay. When I'm ready, I'm going to fill this in white because white is the color that I'm going to be using for um, all of the shapes inside of my black square. And I'm gonna change the border to transparent. Now I'm gonna copy this fish. So Control C, then Control V. Now I have two white fish. I'm going to fill the second one in black while it's selected. And to create a notan, I need to then create a mirror image of this fish on the outside of the square. So I'm going to just move the fish over outside the square and I need to flip it. So to do that, I'm going to right click, click rotate, and then I'm going to flip horizontally. Okay, and then I can line that up. It looks like it's already pretty much where I want it to be though. Now, um, just a little tip for you, a little cool thing you can do, once you've created one fish, you could make multiples and you could make them different sizes as well. So I could select the white fish, copy, paste, and if I'd like, I could make another smaller one. Maybe it's a little baby. And I could make it a little skinnier, a little wider. 
And then once I have my fish, I can place it where I want it to go. I could rotate it. Maybe I want this one to be diving down like that. And maybe I don't want it to be so far uh, against the, uh, the, the edge of the square. Maybe I want it to be right here. I can put it wherever I want. Okay, control C, control V, move it out, fill it black, and then right click, rotate horizontally. All right, now, whenever you have shapes that are not touching the edge of the square, you just want to balance the location, comparing the space or the distance between your shape and the edge of the square. So I'm looking to see that the distance here is the same. Okay, now I'm going to show you some tricks on how you can use already created silhouette images from the internet in your Notan. So we're going to go up to insert image, search the web, and this time we're going to add the word silhouettes to the end of our uh, search. So I'm typing in seahorse silhouettes and I'm going to click on one. Now sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll find a silhouette that's has a transparent background. And when it already has a transparent background, it's very easy to work with in your digital Notan. When it doesn't have a transparent background, it might still be able to be used assuming that you're working with the colors black and white, having a black square and then having a white background at the end. So I have my black silhouette of a seahorse here. First thing I'm gonna do is resize it and decide where I want it to go. Let's say I want this to go um, up here at the top like that, okay? So I can't just dump in color to this to change it to white for the inside, okay? That is not an option in Google Drawing. But what I can do is recolor it under format options and make it negative. So when I make a black image negative, I make it white. So here's how I would do this. First, I'm going to copy and paste. So copy, control C, paste, control V. Now I have my second seahorse. And I'll just move this over here for a second so that we can see it. I'm gonna go up to format options and that's located just right up here in the toolbar. I could also click, uh, I could also right click and get it that way. Under format options, recolor is what I wanna choose. And under recolor, there's a drop down menu and it's going to look like it's just a whole bunch of black seahorses. But if you go all the way down to the bottom, okay, now this is where it's tricky because it doesn't show you anything on the bottom left, but the bottom left option here is what you want to choose. It's white. Okay, again, it looks like nothing's there. Notice nothing is over here. But over here, there's this little blue box around it because it is a selectable option. So I'm going to select it and look, it makes it a negative. Okay, so the recolor name is negative, and now I have a white seahorse. And when I drag it down, then you can actually see that it is truly white. Okay, now to finish this part of my note hand, though, I do still have to flip it. So I'm going to right click and rotate, and I'm gonna be flipping this vertically to flip it down. Okay, and uh, if I wanna have these guys touch the, uh, the edge, I could do that and have their little, little, their little uh, bodies touch. Okay, so now that's how you do it when you get lucky and you find a silhouette with a transparent background, but let's look at what happens when that's not the case. I'm gonna go up to insert image, search the web, and I'm searching for a seaweed silhouette because I wanna do something with seaweed on the bottom of this. And I'm, I'm gonna actually select this one here. And I want you to see how I wouldn't wanna use all of this. First of all, this one does not have a transparent background. So just notice um, I'm working with something now that uh, is gonna have either a black or white background no matter what I do. And I don't wanna use all of this. So I'm just going to be uh, taking pieces or parts from here by cropping it. So to crop, you can double click an image. And if I wanna use this top part here, I would just, once, it's, once I have these bold black corners, that means I'm ready to crop. I drag up so that the only area then showing is going to be what I want to use and everything else is going to be translucent. When I click outside of that area, it's then going to lock it in as my new cropped image. So I'm going to drag this down here and I'm going to line it up with the edge 
of my square. Let's let's make this actually a little smaller. Let me uh, let me do this. I'm gonna go down a bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now this guy's all lined up. It's where I wanted to go. Okay. I'm going to need to create a negative of this, right? Because I want the seaweed to be the area that's white. In the background, I want to be black. So I'm going to right click, go to Format Options, and I'm going to create that negative recolor. So I'm going to scroll down, 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 far bottom left. There we go. That gives me the negative. I'm going to now copy and flip it and then recolor it back to normal. So copy, paste, we'll recolor this back to normal. So now no recolor and I'm gonna flip this. So I'll pull this down and right click, rotate, flip it vertically. And look, now I've really extended this square and, and created this double image now of the seaweed. Okay, so that's what you do. That's kind of how you work with it if you don't get lucky and get that transparent background for a silhouette, but you still want to work with that image. Okay, I'll show you one more thing, and that is how you can use a symmetrical picture like this student did here with the Mickey, how you can use a symmetrical picture and crop it so that you have half inside your square and half outside your square. Back in my ocean note hand now, I'm going to search for a sun since that's a symmetrical image and that would work really nicely on the edge. So I'm gonna click on this one here because I like it. And when it loads, I'm going to have it be placed half on the square, half off the square, like so. And I wanna, I wanna make sure it's gonna fit. So I'm gonna look at the part inside first. In fact, let's go ahead and recolor this. So I'm gonna to go to Format Options, Recolor to the negative so that I can see what it looks like inside the square. I don't want it overlapping anything else. Okay, and again, I want it about half on, half off. It looks like that's gonna work. So I'm now gonna crop this. I want to crop it by double clicking, getting the bold, the bold corners there. I'm going to drag this down to the edge. So what I what I'm wanting to do is to have half of the sun be left inside the square, and now I'm going to actually have to create a copy of it. Control C, Control V, and I'm going to recolor this back to no recolor, so it's black, and then I'm going to have this one be above it, but I'm going to flip it, of course. So to rotate it, right click, rotate, flip down, which is vertical. And now you can see we have our sun. Okay. So that's what I mean by using something symmetrical and having half be inside, half be outside. Now we can also, uh, we can play with having other shapes that are inside of our note hand that aren't actually representational images. So for example, we could insert some shapes of circles for bubbles. Let's go ahead and do some. We'd have some bubbles around fish, right? So I'm gonna fill this white, Let's take out the border. Okay, so if we have a bubble there, uh, maybe we'd even want to copy it and paste another bubble. And let's make this little bubble smaller like that. Okay. Now, if we want to flip these at the same time, what we can do is click on one bubble, hold on our control key and click on our second bubble. Now both bubbles are selected. Control C, control V. Now we have our second set of bubbles. Let's recolor those black. Let's move them out and then we'll rotate them while they're both selected. Okay, and of course, if you accidentally you know, forget to, to keep them both selected. You can always grab them again. So hold down the control key and grab them again. And now right click, rotate horizontally, and there you have it. Again, while they're both selected, drag them where you want them to go.
this area here has a lot more that needs to be done to it. Let's look at how we can use some other line tools. For example, let's come down and, you know, my picture here is covering this. Let me move this. Let's come down to where it says scribble. I'm going to grab the scribble tool and this is going to allow me to actually draw lines. So I'm going to going to click down and I'm going to draw a line of like a wave. Okay. Now I'm going to make that white and I'm going to make this a thicker line like that. And then if I am happy with that line, I can copy and paste it. I can flip it out by flipping it horizontally, moving it out. I clicked the wrong thing. Moving this one outside here and then changing the color. Change the color now to black. Okay, so that's one thing you can do that you might not have thought about is using the scribble tool. Another thing I want to show you is how you can layer shapes on top of each other. So for example, I have the sun up here. What if I wanted to insert a shape, for example, a triangle, and uh, put that triangle, put a triangle inside our sun too. So I'm going to move this up here right on the edge there. Okay, let's take off the border color, change the color to white since this is inside the black. I'm going to bring this right to the edge there. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to copy and paste, make my copy black, and I'm going to rotate that down by flipping it vertically. You see that? I've got a little black square there. I'm going to drag it right underneath. So that's called layering your shapes. And that's a, just a really great way to add more to your piece. Another way of layering is to create a copy and then make your copy smaller. So I'm, now I'm making a smaller fish. Better make it even smaller yet. And I'm going to make that one black. Okay. And then you can uh, put that inside. So kind of making like another smaller version of something that you have. I don't really love how that looks, but I want you to just see how it would be done. Okay. And then of course you'd flip that and it's negative. So I'm going to make it white, white one out here, rotate horizontally. Oh, look, I'm covering it up again. Rotate horizontally and there you have it and you just move it so it fits. Okay, so layering is a great way to add complexity. Come on, buddy. There we go. All right, well, I hope this video helped give you some ideas of more things that you could do with your digital note hands and how to use images already on the internet to help you and to extend your work and kind of take it to the next level using a theme. Again, remember, really wonderful things can be done by people of all ages using this process. And the more you practice, the better you're going to get. So I hope you get to work and make something really cool today. Thanks for watching. Bye.